Good morning. You know, this is how we check the mic. The people at the front are well going to answer. So let me try again. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the people at the front don't answer. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, good. Thank you. I'd like to welcome you to the Thanksgiving service. We will give thanks for Iceland Maud Powell. For somebody who has lived as long as she has, clearly, there's a lot to give thanks for. However, we won't spend a lot of time doing it. So we will do it in strength and in love and in song. This is an Anglican church, you know, that means we're orderly. So we will first have the tributes, which will come in the order as printed and then the remembrance. The service will begin. I invite all who would like to view, to use the opportunity to do that, as once the liturgy begins, the casket will be sealed, and we have no intention of reopening. So I invite you all to share with the family as they give final farewell, final thanks. I invite you to share final supper on her behalf at her Eucharist. Let us pray. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend your servants. We've all come to say thanks for life well lived, for a friend, a mother, a grandmother, a sister, a colleague, fellow church member. Be with us as we worship. Be with us as we leave here. May we learn to live a life pleasing to you. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We open the tributes with Mrs. Spencer Jarrett and Reverend Coley and Mr. Craig Neal as printed. I will not announce the tributes. Tribute to Sister Iselin Maud Powell. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. Ecclesiastics 3, 1 to 2. The road to grief we all must travel. They say there is a reason. They say that time will heal. But neither time nor reason will change the way we feel. Today, we are honored to pay tribute to Iselin Maud Powell, committed Christian, member extraordinaire, who was loved and will be remembered as an outstanding, dedicated, quiet, and unassuming sister, a motivator, God-fearing, strong woman who was able to encourage members of the Mother's Union in achieving its mission and objects. Mrs. Powell was one of the matriarchs of the Mother's Union in this branch, whose work on earth is done, and who is now free from every care and pain, and has gone to meet her Lord in that happy home. We thank God for her life, well lived, in service of God and her fellow men. Mrs. P, Sister P, was an ardent and committed foundation member of the Mother's Union for many decades. She was at every activity, branch, deanery, regional, or diocese, and would not be missing from any activity, whether outreach projects, fundraising, whatever it may be. She was a very kind and helpful person with a giving attitude. As far as I can remember, I knew Sister P as a member of this church, and I was christened here, who was ever present and participating in all activities. She was a dignified, humble, gentle giant 
who quietly and steadily organized fundraising activities. I remember those harvest supper and the sale after harvest. All sorts of sponsorship to carry out our founder, Mary Sumner's dream. Of course, her children was not, were not spared, as she knew how to get them to contribute, although they were no longer residing in the community. She was dependable and could be relied on to be present at most, if not all, the branch meetings, making contributions without fanfare. This was an attribute appreciated, particularly sometimes when we have disagreements. Earl, who predeceased her recently, was a constant chauffeur when she could not come on her own anymore. She had to come, so Earl had to be there. And he was a go-getter, joining and supporting her in many of these activities. When it was painting day, when we are painting the church hall and she can't manage, then she will have to get her hand to do it for her. Mrs. P was committed to her God, her family. She loved her family. I would hear about all the grandchildren as they grow up, and she'll share them with us in our meetings. She was proud of them. We knew all about the holidays and the Christmases spent with Errol and family. So we were there, although we were not there. Craig, we know about Craig, every movement. She never spared herself to give up her time, talent, and resources to the Mother's Union. And my, how she loved to entertain an excellent host. Even while homebound, once she knew we were coming to visit, the refreshments would be there and she'd want us to partake immediately before we even start in the prayer meeting. So passionate was her concern and love for children that she emphasized the benefit and importance of Sunday school. And before being home for the annual prize giving and summer trips, of course, she would join the groups on many occasions. She enjoyed all our outreach projects, our outings and trips to pantomime, plays, and the Mother's Union annual, annual general meeting, regional meetings in different regions around the diocese. She went everywhere with us. On our beach trips, she would ensure, now we were going on a beach trip with basket, but she was ensure that she had tablecloth and a table was spread and even if you had your own meal that you carried, she would have, we have to partake of hers, and she would invite. And she had every type of food and welcomed everyone with open arms, whether you had yours or not. Those persons who have worked closely with Mrs. P recall her excellent interpersonal skills and passion for the Mother's Union, which enabled her to establish a strong personal and spiritual relationship. She loved the youths, and I will just read one sentence, a few sentences that a youth who came to this church, she's not here now, she's in England, and she said this. One of the first times I walked into Holy Trinity, I noticed a beautiful lady sat behind my mother, not me, Mrs. Knight. From her features to the way she pinned up her hair, she was, a little, she was little and neat and just too cute. And then she smiled at me, and on that one same moment, her smile said, I welcome you with love. It's so good to see you as if we had known each other for years. This warmed my heart, and I will always ask after her whenever I phone my mom. On a few occasions, I drove my mom to visit her when she was unable to go to church. She was very appreciative, and although not strong, would always come out of the gate and thank me, showing her strength and humility. It was during one of these visits we realized we shared the same birthday. This seemed to explain our unusual bond, and we'll be both, we will both send messages to each other via my mother. So although far away, we're always in each other's thought. The quiet, humble soul I know, as Mrs. Sowell, will be greatly missed. The members of the Mother's Union in the Diocese of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands are grateful for her many years of dedicated service to the church and community. We express sincere condolences to the family, yet we rejoice with you as we celebrate a life well lived in service of others. Her sister has run her race. Let her life be an example for all of us. Iselin Powell, Sister P, Mrs. Powell, will, rem will be remembered for her quiet dignity, faithfulness, and presence. We'll remember her not for how long her life was, 
but for how rich it was. As we remember the life of our dear sister, let us continue to live by her example, the prayer of our founder, Mary Sumner. All this day, O oh Lord, let me touch as many lives as possible for thee. And every life I touch, do thou by thy spirit quicken, whether through the word I speak, the prayer I breathe, or the life I live. We now commit our dear sister, Iseline Maud Powell, to God's gracious keeping, and as her soul rests in peace, may your eternal light shine upon her. Good morning, everyone. Let me begin by first extending condolences to the family on behalf of all of us here as clergy, um, to you all, um, members of the family, from your church family. We stand with you at this time and throughout the bereavement period. I'm just to give a brief reflection or tribute to our sister, Iselin Powell. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. Words from Proverbs 31, verse 10. Iselin Powell, a beloved member of the church, was a dignified, quiet, patient, diligent, and ardent church member, who was very supportive of the church and its activities in her active years. She can be commended for all the wonderful things she did. And what is most important about her is that she fears and loves her Lord. She lived her entire life out in a desire to honor and serve the Lord and displayed godly wisdom and devotion. In the years preceding her confinement at home, she would on Sundays occupy, along with family members, a pew in the right section of the church and would be welcoming presents to both visitors to the church and members who occupy that side and all other persons who worship here. And everyone will be in greeted, as you heard before, with an engaging smile and twinkling eyes as she would inquire into the status of themselves and their families. And we proceeded to assist the visitors to follow the order of services. This church, Holy Trinity, truly benefited from her efforts and involvement at all levels of congregational life. She was very dynamic and diligent in nurturing our young people in the church, spiritually and materially, in Sunday School and Anglican Young People Association, then, now the Anglican Youth Fellowship, AYF, can attest to this. They benefited from her culinary skills, cakes and meals to support both Sunday School gatherings and social events and fundraisers whenever they were staged many of whom now serve the church in leadership positions, were nurtured by her as she gave of her time, talent, and the treasure. She served on the church committee and subcommittees, having been so well established in her faith in the Anglican church, a journey which started in her childhood days in a community in Hanover and later in, latterly in Kingston. Her faith, remains unwavering. Her support to the church for the raising activities was renowned, and there was a friendly rivalry between certain families to, to see who could contribute more. Invariably, the powers would be vying for either first or second place in these fundraisers. We know this was as a result of this matriarch marshalling all the family members to give their utmost. She's speaking of family. Her dedication and commitment to family is unquestionable. And of course, 
that spiritual guidance, nurturing and influence still prevails with all surviving children and their own offsprings. All the members of the church would remember her supporting the AYF's activities. She would attend activities and give donations to their causes. The Mother's Union, will, as you heard, will attest, have attested to this. The then Garden Club of the church and Old Harbor flourished greatly from her direction and involvement. All areas of congregational life benefited from her godly and spiritual largesse in one way, shape, or form. It was an immense joy to visit with her to, with her, to take the Holy Eucharist to her at her home when illness no longer permitted her to attend the church. Myself and those who accompanied her, me would often feel blessed and inspired as we spent time with her. One would not know that she was only going to be in the living room or the veranda where we had the visit, was hosting the visitation uh, based on how she was physically prepared. Not only was she prepared in this way, thanks to Earl who deceased her and Vio, would ensure she was elegantly ready. She always had her list of hymns prepared for us to sing from the ancient and modern and for latterly the, her CPWI, the new hymn book, as well as her Bible. She was always engaging fully, reading in reading and singing and expressing her own perspective as we reflected on the chosen scriptural passage. Her confinement in no way diminished her impact, participation, or legacy. She would ensure as a true host that we would be refreshed from our visit and filled further to continue the other visitations which we had for the day. She was a very resilient woman. And I say this on the fact of her many hospital hospitalizations as each episode also gave testimony of her strength and the strength of her faith and her love for her God. She remained unwaveringly anchored spiritually. Needless to say, she weathered those storms quite well. We say to you, Sharon, Errol, grandchildren and other family members, great grands and other family members, our prayers remain with you. We thank God for having blessed our lives with her as mother and for blessing your lives as mother and for allowing her to respond to God's offer of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and leading her to accept her own mission in offering you the Christ she came to know. Here at Holy Trinity, her legacy will continue through the current leaders and members who will continue to keep the banner of Christ unfurled and flying, beckoning all in this community and beyond. You as family, hold on to the memories Keep the faith as we hold you all up in prayerful support. A virtuous woman, a gift from God whose life was a testament of, to God's grace and favor and was a blessing to others with whom she came in contact. She remained faithful to God even when faced with adversities, such as the death of her husband and children. She has now taken leave of us, gone to join the saints in the heavens and we thank God for the gift of her life. We trust in the promise of eternal life and hold on to the hope of one day being reunited with you in heaven. Thank you for all that you were and all that you did. You will always be remembered and loved from your church family here at Holy Trinity. Good morning. Okay. I must admit that it was with much trepidation that I accepted the task of not only writing but reading this remembrance this morning. The pang of death and loss is never easy to deal with. I am, however, comforted by the word 
of the Lord. Ecclesiastes 7 verses 1 to 4 provides that a good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. It's better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. With that said, I wish to celebrate the life of a remarkable mother and matriarch. Today we gather together to pay tribute to Aislinn Maud Powell, a woman who touched our lives in the most profound ways. Grandma was a pillar of strength, kindness, and wisdom, and her presence filled our hearts with love and warmth. Though she may no longer be physically with us, her spirit lives on forever, etched in our memories. Grandma had a way of making everyone feel special. Her smile could light up a room and her laughter was infectious. She had a sharp sense of humor that continued through her later years. Her witness was on display even in hospital when a doctor said, Grandma, you've not been eating. Her response, I don't like the food. Are you the owner of the hospital and have you tasted the food? She asked. The doctor said, no, exactly, said grandma. You don't eat the food, so why should I? I lived with my grandparents for a year when I was 10 years old. One humorous and enduring memory I have is what I like to call the great debate. It was early on a Saturday morning. I was awakened by a great debate between my grandparents, with the moot topic being whether the piece of cloth that my grandfather used to dust down the interior of his car was called chamoy or chamay. This debate lasted for hours on end, with no one giving up an inch of ground. Grandma was very opinionated and held true to what she believed was right. Be that as it may, she had a gentle touch that brought comfort and a listening ear that offered solace. We always felt safe and loved in her presence, knowing that she was there for us no matter what. She had a deep well of wisdom, garnered through her life with, with experiences and lessons learned. Grandma taught us the importance of family, of cherishing our relationships, and of embracing every moment. She showed us the value of hard work, perseverance, and integrity. Her words of encouragement and guidance continue to inspire us even in her absence. One of grandma's greatest gifts was her ability to create a sense of home wherever she went. Her house was a place of warmth where the aroma of ackee and boiled bananas filled the air and where laughter and stories echoed through the walls. She opened her doors to anyone in need, making them feel like part of the family. Grandma's home was a haven of love, acceptance, and belonging. She had a special bond with each and every one of us, and we hold dear the memories we shared with her. From the long walks to the market to the heartfelt conversations we had on lazy afternoons, those moments are etched in our hearts forever. We were blessed to have Grandma's love and to witness her unwavering devotion. Grandma's legacy lives on in the values she instilled in us. She taught us to be compassionate, to forgive, and to embrace life's challenges with grace. She showed us the power of resilience and the importance of never giving up. Grandma's love and lessons will guide us through the ups and downs of life, inspiring us to be the best version of ourselves. As we say goodbye to Grandma, let us remember the joy she brought into our lives. Let us honor her by embodying the qualities she so beautifully exemplified. Let us continue to share her love, kindness, and wisdom with others, spreading the light that she brought into this world. Though we mourn the loss of our beloved grandma, we are grateful for the time we had with her. She enriched our lives in countless ways, 
and her memory will forever be a source of comfort and inspiration. Grandma, thank you for everything. Rest peacefully, knowing that you will always hold a special place in our hearts with eternal love and gratitude from all your children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. We're celebrating a life well lived. My mother had the warmest smile, biggest heart, and the most reassuring voice. Everyone loved Mama from the very first moment they met her. Iceland Maud Powell was born in a small village, Salt Spring in Hanover, close to Green Island. Her father died at an early age. Shortly after his passing, her aunt visited and declared that with her good looks, she deserved to live in the big city. So soon after, she moved with this aunt to Kingston. She attended St. Joseph's Girls School, now St. Aloysius Primary. The strong principles of the Franciscan sisters no doubt underpinned her life. She had unshakable faith in God, which explains why she navigated this life so confidently, with joy and with no regrets. She had every respect for the lives of others and always seized the opportunity to help the needy. She maintained excellent family relations. My mother met the love of her life, her father, Ashton Powell, in Kingston. After I was born, they moved to Old Harbor for dad's hometown. Their over 65 years relationship and marriage, up to his passing in 2010, produced three more children, Sonia, who predeceased her, Earl, who passed recently, and Sharon, the youngest. Mama loved her four children, 12 grandchildren and 13 great-grandchildren, as much as she loved her daughters-in-law and son-in-law. Her father's two other children, now deceased, became her own, and they accepted, adopted, and loved her. As children and young adults, we lived happily together. But Mama's loving and protective embrace did not end here. She was affectionately called Mother P, Mama P, Mrs. P, and was mother to all the children who were her close neighbor, as well as those not so close, and naturally our school friends. Our home was always full of children who enjoyed our company but even more than anything else, savored Mama's delectable culinary offerings. The variety of pastries, breads, cakes, jams, and other preserves, the ackee and saltfish, codfish fritters, bay bun and fry fish, and hot chocolate. For the adults, she brewed wines and other liqueurs. It was always home sweet home. I'm sure there are many in the congregation this morning who can relate to this. Joy, the mother of my brother Earl's children, migrated when the children were very young. Mama seamlessly fell into the roles of mother and father. Upon Mama's passing, Joy, in a note of consolation, wrote, and I quote, Mother P had such unconditional love for my children 
and supported them in every way possible. For that, I am forever grateful. The children lived at different times, between one to three miles from our home. Mama walked every day to take food for them and ensure that they were being properly cared for and were comfortable. The consistency of these walks over the years no doubt contributed to our mental acuity and physical agility. Mama was the poster child for maternal love and motherhood. So when my sister Sonia's children approached the age to attend primary school, she convinced her that the best place for the boys to get their early education was at Old Harbor Primary School. And I can attest to this as we all went there. The boys, as Craig mentioned, went to live in Old Harbor, and Mama was even a more happier camper. Speak about intergenerational relationships. Mama fully understood it and the children benefited from it. Her granddaughter, Denise, is emphatic in stating that their favorite moments were spent reading the Bible and having praise and worship sessions, which she says she will treasure and cherish forever. And I'm so impressed with the statement which Denise sent, so I quote verbatim, she'll always forever be in my heart and our memories will travel through the generation of my children as I eagerly and passionately await their maturity to tell them about their great grandmother. I promise that I will instill the same values and standards she embedded in me in them. Similar views were expressed by all her grandchildren. Mama's dedication to our church, as we heard earlier, and God is unmatched. There were no questions in our home about going to church on Sundays. It was built in her DNA. She would go twice for the Eucharist, which alternated with morning prayers, and then evening song. We children, in addition, had to attend afternoon Sunday school. Of course, we would have completed homework and would have already prepped for the upcoming school week. At church, we had to participate in outreach and youth programs. She was heavily involved in the Mother's Union and Flower Guild. She loved flowers. She spent hours gardening, and her beautiful, well-maintained garden added to the coziness of Esquil Villas, our home. She was quite accustomed to winning prizes and trophies at flower shows in Old Harbor and other parts of the island where the church's flower guild participated. Her Saturdays at the market were legendary. She was known by most of the vendors. Since in early years at various times, she acted as banker for the famous partner self-appointed financial controller, advisor, and social worker. Her market excursion, and what I used to call extracurriculars, lasted for hours, to the extent that her grandson, Kino, revealed how much he enjoyed going to the market with her because he had a lot of time to play and interact with the folks in the market. Once when one of the vendor friends, one of our vendor friends did not show up at the market for a few weeks because she had a problem finding a suitable place to leave her children. Mama decided to solve the problem by having the kids sleep at our house on weekends. We had to share our bed as Mama evenly arranged, rearranged our lives. If this taught us anything, it was empathy such a valuable lesson which has remained with each of us. We were the extended family of many of our school friends. Some were short-term boarders, some after school, 
others during the holidays, and some even lived with us for extended periods. As long as she could manage, she attended all school functions for her children and grandchildren, whether local or overseas. Although her father retired from flying quite early after his first overseas trip due to fear, Mama remained unfazed, and on occasion she even acted as chaperone to her grandchildren going on summer holidays overseas. Mama's opinion was valued and her company treasured in the community of Old Harbor. This is endorsed by many and expressed in the words of Lorna Judy Ellis, a friend of Sharon, who says, Many of the character traits that we as young people growing up in the town of Old Harbor developed can be attributed to how we were raised by a caring family of which Miss P was an impactful influencer. She touched many lives and contributed to the betterment of Old Harbor. As one of the crew who looked forward to chimed and sniffed out her famous soft and top potato pudding. And here, Lorna used the pudding analogy to describe Mama. Just like when baking a pudding, you get these ingredients that don't appear to work together. But blending well will produce amazing results. Miss P's dry wit, assessing gaze, generous spirit, and spiciness, along with her experience in life, blended together to create a personality that can only characterize a woman of God, a gentle soul. <clears throat> Let's not see Mama <clears throat> as a from betrayed least woman. She never was. She had a very sharp sense of humor that continued throughout her later years. Craig told you about her response to the doctor's comment on her not eating. On another occasion, the stethoscope of the doctor who was examining her fell on her knee. She remarked, Doctor, oh, you're so slight. You know you could break my knee? The doctor could do nothing else but laugh and said, Grandma, I agree. I am slight and I will do better next time. She was a source of joke, jokes to the doctors, nurses, and caregivers while she was in hospital, who said she keep, kept them laughing and made their jobs easier. I have fond memories of her takeover of sections of a property in which I owned a two-bedroom apartment in Otto Rios. I told her that she could take up to six of our friends for a picnic. She made arrangements, chartered a bus, and was off. To my surprise, the housekeeper called in a panic to say that my mother had arrived with 30 friends. I was certain that my poor little mother had gotten herself into a pickle. I braced myself for the fallout, but it never came. You see, Mama not only negotiated with the property manager to allow them to stay, but she also got four extra apartments at no charge. I wish I had such astute negotiating skills. Suffice it to say, they had a wonderful time, and she and her friends enjoyed many more years of their ocherous day charter picnics. Many family members, countless friends and relatives have expressed the same sentiments about Mama. Her unconditional love for all, her love of church and strong faith in God. For most of her life, she experienced good health, free from excessive medications and unscheduled visits to the doctor. She was blessed with 97 years and her health only deteriorated seriously after being hospitalized for a relatively minor illness a few years ago. We thank everyone who was helping our care. 
the caregivers, the nurses, doctors, family and friends. Mama was indeed an extraordinary and phenomenal woman, or kindred spirit. Mama, continue to rest in peace as we know that you are with heaven's best. faith in Jesus Christ, we received the body of our sister Iceland Maud for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that we raise her to perfection the company of the saints. I bless the body of our sister Iceland Maud with holy water that we cause her baptism, which St. Paul writes, All of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we were buried together with him, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. The day of her baptism, her sister was incorporated into Christ. The day of Christ's coming, may she be clothed with glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Iceland Maud. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth, till by your call we are united with those who have gone before, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn, 
Now thank we all our God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant, Iceland Maud. We pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the ministry of the word. reading verses 1 through 5 and verse 9. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they seemed to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster. And they're going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. For those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love. Because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, 
and he who watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. Good morning. This reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, from verses 14 through 19. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. This is the word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 6, beginning to read at verse 37. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me. And anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. 
Lord, continue to teach and mold us. We, your children, in the way that we should go. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, friends all, recently I was reading of a psychologist by the name of Albert Bandura, someone I've read before, and I learned of his theory. In 1963, Bandura and his assistants, Ross and Ross, two ladies, which could have been sisters, I presume, they helped him to develop a theory that is still utilized today. The theory explains the exchange between what happens in the development of a child in correlation to the environment. So the environment that a child is in has an impact on their learning and their development. Bandura went and sought a school where he got permission in the United States to run this simple test. He asked a lady to record a video of her saying some abusive things to a doll, an inflatable doll. And the woman said some abusive things to the doll, and they recorded it. The video recorded it. And all Bandura did was to go to the school, which was like an early childhood school, and ask the children to step away from class to watch this video. I doubt the video lasted much long than a minute. And the children watched this woman saying abusive things to this doll, and then the video ended. Before the children went back to their classroom, the same doll that was in the video was placed in the classroom. And Bandura and Ross and Ross and the others watched. Learning continued, but as soon as the time came for them to play, playtime came around, they noticed, well, you can tell what, what happened. Some of the children went up to the doll and started to verbally abuse it. Interestingly, though, in the video, the woman did not put her hands or her feet on the doll. But they noticed the children added to what they saw in the video. They used their hands and their feet, and they abused the doll. So Bandura built this theory about the impact of the environment upon children's development. So brothers and sisters in Christ, as a man of the cloth, you can imagine how I felt when I go to some of our early childhood schools and I ask the children, share with me a song that you love to sing. And the children start up a song where they say they're going to kick and box down Satan. And the interesting thing, friends, they're not just saying it with their lips. They're doing the motions. They're fighting and they're kicking. And I'm saying, I'm not sure this is good. And everybody seems to be OK with it. You and I know Jamaica has enough violence. We have been having so much violence for the longest while. We have been manufacturing it and exporting it. Proverbs 22 says, verse 6 in particular, train up a child in the way the child should go. And then the child, when old, will not depart from it. Many of you must be wondering, where am I going with this? And what does this have to do with isolating? Well, you see, friends, as a young clergyman, one of my experiences is that when I come to a context that I don't know anybody, I get the opportunity to meet people. And that can be a very wonderful experience. 
I get to meet all kinds of people from all different backgrounds here in Jamaica. But sometimes, friends, I only get to meet persons when they are ill. That's part of the reality, too. So I don't get to meet someone when they're young and robust. I get to meet them when they're a little bit older, not much of their usual self, they're a little bit weaker, and they're struggling with an illness. What happens in those moments, though, is that the person usually is very genuine in their sharing with you. You see, friends, when you're on the up and up and things are going well, sometimes we can put on a little mask. We can put on a little clout. But when you're on your back and you're ill and your life might be threatened, your true self comes out. And that's the beauty sometimes when I get to meet persons. I wish not to meet them at this stage in life. I wish I could meet them a little earlier in life. But it is the reality. But what I can say to you, as I met Iselin, I was not able to meet her in a younger stage. So I listened keenly to the tributes. But I can say to you, friends, before I heard the tributes, I have an idea of the kind of woman that she was. How do I know? Well, Bandura kind of gave you a hint. Let's use Bandura's theory in the reverse. Pay attention to the children, and you can tell a lot about the mother. Make sense? Yes. And so, when I met the children, and I remember when I met quite a group, quite a good size of the family at the hospital, medical associates, and by their interaction, by the little things they would say, the way they interacted with each other, I could tell a lot about the family, but more importantly, I could tell about Iselin. You see, friends, this is what matters today. I'm very concerned for our nation. I'm very concerned for our world because our children, the kind of teaching that we once used to give our children, the kind of nurturing is it's not the same. You see, we're focusing on STEM, STEM subjects, science, technology, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the morals, the ethics, the things that we ought to teach our children that when they grow up and they're in charge of multi-million dollar companies, they don't steal. They don't believe that everything belongs to them. They learn to work with other people because it's not about you. You recognize you belong to a family, you belong to a nation, you belong to God. And therefore your impact on the world is important. And that you don't exist in this world simply to please yourself and those who think like you or those who are in the same club like you. You see, friends, you can tell the kind of woman she was. And this is the kind of woman I want to believe we need more of in Jamaica. I could tell she was a disciplined woman just by looking at her children. I could tell she was a humble woman just by looking at her children. I could tell she was a woman of God just by looking at her children. She had a faith. It wasn't just a lip service. She had a deep faith. I could tell she was a woman who was hospitable. I could tell because she planted the seeds in her own children. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today our children are learning too much violence in so many ways. Let me help you to understand why this song was so, was so disturbing for me. You see, a young boy and a young girl are learning to kick and box Satan. Now you and I know Satan is an evil force. It's a spiritual force. Let me ask you this question. How would you feel if you see someone teaching a child to have a physical fight with the wind? You think that person is crazy. What are we teaching our children? To kick and box Satan, a spiritual being, with physical force? If I see a child learning to fight the wind, I'd wonder about the mind of that child. More importantly, I wonder about the the person who is teaching the child to defeat the wind by using your fists. 
and your feet. But most importantly, let's roll down the years. When these children become adults, and God forbid if they call you Satan, a kick and box might come. When they're in their relationships, and the relationship's not working too well, and one call the other one Satan, a kick and box might follow. Be careful of the seeds that we plant. That's what Bandua is saying. It matters. It all matters. And we are spending too many time, too much time focusing on just the academics, but we don't realize that's not what makes a human being the best human being for any society. So we continue to mass produce Jamaicans, some of whom we are not so proud of. And we need to do better. Friends, children are to learn the real devotion that when troubled times come, when troubling times come, they must learn how to pray. When, when tough times come, they must learn how to meditate, how to be still for a while. When tough times come, they need to learn how to look at themselves and wonder, how can I be a better person? How can I overcome this? When tough times come, they'll need to learn how can I reach out to someone? They need to learn how to develop right kinds of friendships, the right kind of friends. They need to learn these kinds of skills. Friends, they need to learn how to interact with us, each other, human beings. How to interact with each other in a peaceful and mindful way. It's not lost on me, friends, that our government is trying to roll out justice initiatives Restorative justice, because our communities need it so much. I must confess, as a young man, sometimes I envy the era of Iceland. Seemed like Jamaica was a different kind of place. I see Jamaica in a place now that we, we all feel as if we want to run away for a bit. And the truth is, running away will not solve our problems. I look to people like Iceland and I, whenever I have the opportunity to talk with them, I often ask them about their era when they were growing up. And every single time they share with us the disciplines that they abide by, that made them who they are. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when we come to a funeral service like this, to hear about a stalwart like this, we give thanks and praise. But you and I know, in case you don't know, let me be very blunt with you, this sermon is not for her. This sermon is for you. That we can look at Iceland and say, you know, I want to be like that. But I want to say something to us first and foremost, friends. Iceland was taught how to be the woman she was. It didn't just happen like that. She was taught. And if you should go back a few teachers, as far back as you can go, it often boiled down to the love of Jesus Christ, who is our rabbi, our great teacher. In learning to love God and love his son, Jesus Christ, in, love, in learning to abide by him and abide in him in the Holy Spirit, it teaches us how we should really live as human beings. And therefore, the great teacher was, must be proud, I should say, of Iceland, of all the work she has done. In, in recent times, friends, I've been reading on Stoicism and all these great philosophers, and they say if you want to change the world, you have to start with yourself. Look in the mirror and start with yourself. And while you're doing that, help someone else in the change. Iceland was such a person. She grew and developed herself. She became the woman that she is, a great woman of faith. And she imparted that knowledge to her children and her children's children, as I heard from the tributes. That is something that is missing in our world today. How many boys I come across that are struggling to tie their shoelaces? No father to teach them. How many girls do I see who are struggling to understand their own bodies? They have a mother, but the mother don't care to teach them. I see so, many, so much of this in our schools today. Friends, just take the time out and journey in our schools, you'll be surprised of what the children are not learning. So brothers and sisters in Christ, I give thanks for Iceland and her life. 
I give thanks for her children that I got the chance to know. We say goodbye to her, but we understand that she returns to her great teacher, the one who taught her. And Jesus said, I promise you, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I promise that where I go, you'll be with me also. We look to examples like isolated in our world today. We lift them up. We give thanks for their lives. We give thanks for the many things that she has done. Friends, we've heard it from the tributes. This church, this congregation knows it. She has run a very good race. She passed on the baton. And so I pray that you and I will take a page from her book. I close with this, friends. I close with this hymn, which is a very popular hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. I was really surprised by the person who wrote this hymn, Thomas Chislam. Thomas was a young man, and someone taught him. He wasn't necessarily a Christian. He became a teacher before he became a Christian. And in his early 20s, someone taught him, and then he became a Christian. The moment he became a Christian, friends, to his dying day, he wrote over 1,200 poems, over 1,200 poems, sharing the love of God with others where he could, wherever he could. He later on became a minister, but not, not for too long. I don't think being a minister of God was his calling for too long. He only was a minister for a year. And then he went on to sell insurance. What a transition. But nonetheless, he left us with a wonderful hymn. Great is thy faithfulness. O oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. And I want to expound on that. No shadow, no darkness you can find where God does not exist. It reminds me of the 23rd Psalm that says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For God is with me. It reminds us that even in death, friends, God is there with us. No shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. God is still the same compassionate God from back in the Old Testament even to this day, 2023. And thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, your hand have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. I imagine Iceland singing this hymn, but I want us all to learn the words of this hymn, and especially to the family who mourn at this time. You're never alone. God is with you. Take it one day at a time. And remember Iceland with fond memories. May her soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine upon her. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
in the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, O Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Let us, let us, let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. May all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection die to sin and rise to newness of life. And may we with him pass through the grave and gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Hear us, Lord. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Hear us, Lord. Lord, give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Hear us, Lord. Father of all, we pray to you for Iselin Maud and for all the, those that we love but see no longer. Grant them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May Iselin Maud and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in peace. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, of mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace be among us all. Peace.
put it right there. Is that? The offer to him, shine, Jesus, shine.
Welcome to your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. There we hope to share in your glory, where every tear will be wiped away. On that day we shall see you, our God, as you are. We shall become like you. Praise you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, from whom all good things do come. With him, and in him, and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor, Savior has taught us, so we pray. Oh, Lord. 
this word to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. Because the Lord is sharing one Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant her rest. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant her rest. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant her rest eternal. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing that song of praise to them. Amen.
We say the post communion prayer together. Please stand. Together, Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us comfort in affliction, a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom, where, where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please sit. Mrs. Elan Neal. Good morning, or good afternoon, brothers and sisters. You didn't have to leave the glory of heaven But you became a simple man You didn't have to serve the poor and afflicted But you touched and healed their brokenness No greater love has been given you became the ultimate sacrifice Creating me the heart of a servant Let this be my soul's desire Show me how to love In the true meaning of the word Teach me to sacrifice Expecting nothing in return I want to give my life away Becoming more like you each and every day Words are just not enough Please show me how to love I saw a bruised and battered woman with her hungry children on the street and Then I heard you ask in that still small voice What have you done for the least of these? Lord, consume me with a burning fire That melts away your complacency And given me the heart of a servant that someone will find their way in me Show me how to love In the true meaning of the word In return I want to give my life away Becoming more Open up my 
We've reached a part in the book in your program where it says the commendation. Give rest to Christ, your servant, Iceland Maud, with your saints. You only are mortal, creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us commend our sister Iceland Maud, the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant Iceland Maud, O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil. Set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Iceland Maud. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, sheep of your own fold, lamb of your own flock, sin of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Iceland Maud, Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. To paradise may the angels lead you. At your coming may the martyrs receive you, bring you to the holy city, Jerusalem. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. There will be a repast. Uh, we are going to send out the church to inter Iceland Maud. We'll park at the church and we'll do the burial in the cemetery. The church as a hall. We invite you who come to pause for the repast at the church hall. Recessional hymn. We're marching to Zion. Mm -hmm. 